I am such a fangirl of this choreographer, and I'm so excited to say hello. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. Ça passe. Oof. All right, you guys, welcome to another episode of To The Point with Kristen Burt, presented by Dance Network here on Popcorn Talk. You guys, I, I got to tell you, we probably should have started, like, with our interview out in the hallway, because he and I, Luther Brown and I, have been having a really good time. You guys know I'm from So You Think You Can Dance, and he's up to so many fascinating projects that he's going to tell us right here today. I'd like to say hello to Luther Brown. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We are amped. We have to say, because uh, <laughs> I told him the top 10. Don't tell anyone. We can't talk about who the top 10 is, but we were Yo. just saying you were really excited by the cast Yo. in general. Yeah, my brain is already, my brain's already going through 25 things because the setup is crazy. It, yeah. The setup is crazy. It's going to be an awesome show. It, it really is. And I keep trying mm -hmm. to tell the fans, I'm like, I can't tell you who it is, but I promise you this cast will deliver. Yeah, everybody has, and everyone's a performer too. They know Ooh. they know what they're doing. Everyone's a performer. I already know I'm like this. You know, I'm gonna send the praises up so I can get who I want. <laughs> Come on now. Oh Come on, if I get that crew, it's done. Yeah, I, it I really know. is. There's certain ones I'm like, eee! let me get that, let me get that, let me get that. I've been teasing everyone saying that mm -hmm. there are some superstar pairings, and I'm yeah. like, and you can confirm that at least. We can't confirm the names, but we right. can confirm that there are superstar pairings. Ooh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> nah, it's crazy because the like the certain names that are on there. I mean, I saw I saw the show too, so I saw some of the some of the auditions, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just like it the 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 it's like endless. I don't know. The choreographers that get to work with these guys this season, your brain it, it it's gonna be great because you get to do whatever you want. Like right. they're 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 that good. The talent level. The talent level is yeah. that good that everyone's going to enjoy who they get. Well, that's what I'm looking forward to. I think, um, you know, last season was amazing. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But yeah. it was just a different feel because it's kids and there's mm -hmm, certain mm -hmm. things you can do with kids and certain things you cannot. So. Right, right, right. But, you know, I'm so excited that you are here. I'm I, Seriously, I'm such a fangirl. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I hope I keep it together because one of my favorite all-time routines is Hello, Good Morning with Twitch and Fiction. Ah, so I've watched you. it. Honestly, 25, 30, maybe 40 <laughs> times. So, and I was watching That's a couple cool. more times just to get in, you know, in the Luther like brown vein, get uh -huh, ready for uh -huh, the uh -huh. uh, for the interview. So, <laughs> cool. but you know, I, I think yeah. this is all, this show. We love to like kind of like go back to the beginning and really find out more about you and how you got your start because I know you were born in Jamaica yes. and then raised in Canada. Yes. So that's kind of like an interesting, Ooh. yeah, difference yeah. one between the other. You know, I mean, um, the, the transition from Jamaica, I left Jamaica when I was in grade four. So I lived there, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like I was just, I was there and I left at two years old or something. Right. I grew up there. It so was in you. It was in me, you know? And um, moved to Toronto. And it, it's funny because my cousins were break dancing and doing stuff like that in Jamaica. And growing up in Jamaica, it's a lot of musicals and stuff on TV. So I just kind of always, there's something that, attract, that, that, that attracted me to the, to the whole big movie dance, the dance movie thing, you know, the whole musical life. Um, so when I went to Canada and got introduced to hip hop and R&B, it was just kind of what it was. Now, is you it know? your dad that has the musical background? Yes, my dad, my dad is, a, I mean, right now he's a superintendent for a, a school system, school, mm -hmm. school board. But uh, my dad was a radio DJ. He was also, he also worked with EBS, which is kind of like NBC. Yep. But back in the day, Jamaica. Um, so he he was into all the music. He was him and Bob Marley and Toots and and every they were all friends and stuff. So he was he was in it. He was in the music scene the whole time I was growing up. Well, I think that's really interesting too because I I never feel like musicality can be taught. It's like in you, and yeah. you were around so much music, different Oof. rhythms and everything yeah. else. Um, I think it explains a lot about your choreography, because your <laughs> which I love, and I think that's what I love about your choreography is yeah. that it's always unexpected moves and unexpected beats, which I really appreciate. Right, I appreciate that. No, it's um, I mean, growing up in Jamaica is a thing. Our our culture is very. We have our dance is a part of our culture, so. It's like there's a different dance move every other day. There's 500 new dances every week. But the whole culture, everybody knows it. So we're just, 
we're like a groovy culture. It, it sounds corny, but we're that's just, good though. We're just groovy all day. So, you know, uh, everybody has a little sauce in the movement. That's period. Good. Yeah. So it's. <laughs> I see it now. I mean, now you know you're, you're older. You can put it together more. But I realize that's why I like those little grooves, and I know how to throw it in and out of different pockets because culturally, that's what we do. Now we're obviously um, in Jamaica. You're you're dancing. You're listening to a lot of music because it's a part of the culture. But yeah. are you taking any sort of trained dance classes? Are you with a crew at all? Ooh, training. Ooh, training. What we? You know you're what like, I trained with? I trained with watching um when I when I got to Canada watching Michael Jackson on TV or watching Bobby Brown. I wanted to be Bobby. I knew I was Bobby Brown, you know what I'm saying? I was doing those steps, teaching my friends at the bus stop, you know? Um, but there was no there was no dance class. I never took a dance class. And I think what a lot of people, if you didn't grow up in the 80s, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that, especially with Michael Jackson, he introduced an entire generation. Yeah. And this was also when MTV really broke through. Yeah. Um, Everyone was running home from school, mm -hmm. watching the videos. We knew every <laughs> dance, yep. we knew every move, um, and 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 Michael Jackson was for everyone. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't for you know, the people that like this type of music or people that like this yeah, type of music. Everybody. He was everybody's musician, everybody's champion. That's it. But that's but I mean, it's it's like those were the days. Those were the days. Like all my inspiration came from things on TV, and being that I was, you know, I was in the hood, so there wasn't really a lot of dance courses and dance studios. Mm -hmm. The first dance studio I actually, which is the funniest thing, the first time I was ever in an actual dance studio was on my first job in New York. Like, after like when a university. Like, I went to New York, I was doing, um, it's a video, uh, camera on a maze, horse and carriage, old school video. And um, I had to do an audition. I didn't even know what an audition was. Because I didn't, I don't know the terms. Did you have a headshot and resume? You're <laughs> right. like, nope. <laughs> right. I was on that Greyhound bus with my homie. I had my headphones, you know what I'm saying, making up the routine on the bus. Yep. Got off the train. I mean, got off the thing, went to the train station, went to rehearsal, and um, I had to teach all these, all these people that I watched on TV growing up, and that tripped me out. But that was the first time we walked into Musical Theatre Works, and I was like, whoa, like, what are you doing with all these mirrors? And we didn't know anything about mirrors. It was... Back in the day, we used to rehearse outside of medical buildings and, and pharmacies that had the window screen. And that Wherever was our you can find a space, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was just what it was for us. Basketball courts, whatever space you can get, pull up, pull up on the curb and play the music from your car. And, and people, if you're not from New York, Musical Theater Works is one of the legendary Broadway spaces yes. for auditions, rehearsals, everything. So pretty much <laughs> everyone has walked through those hallowed halls. Yes. And for that to be my first experience in a dance studio was ridiculous you go big i was like whoa but it was it was it was what it was it was, it was amazing and that's what started everything a certain way did that sort of was that your first like big job where you're like this is this is breaking me through to in america in america in america okay. yeah because um in toronto i uh a lot of my friends happened to be a lot of the artists that were top of all the toronto scenarios and um they knew I had my dance crew. I had a dance crew called Do That. It was like 20 superstars. Tinsha Scott. A lot of people that are choreographers now. Oh, I love that. They were, they were all my crew, you know? And, um, and so people knew me from that. And I ended up choreographing a lot of videos and tours and stuff in Toronto. But I didn't even, at that point, I still didn't know I was a choreographer. I was just a dude that had a dance crew that was putting steps to these people's music and stuff like that. And then um, word of mouth traveled and... New York, and then hence that's how I got to go to New York to well, go through that. Here's the interesting thing because you know, I trained as a dancer, but I always knew I was never a choreographer. I right. knew it, it wasn't in me, it right. wasn't something that I was interested in. When did you know you were a choreographer? Well, when, when, when I knew I, I um, see, this is the thing, this is what the tricky part is. I didn't know I was a choreographer until probably my third or fourth artist in New York. Wow. Because I didn't know the term. Right. We didn't know the term. We just knew Bobby Brown had dancers. Those are the dancers. We didn't even know, oh, the choreographer taught that or so-and-so. -and -so. We didn't know any of those things. So I just thought I was the team captain. That's what I, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the leader. You know, but when did I know I was that guy? Um, I think probably after my third dance crew when I kept on, when I realized I always was the one teaching it and making it up and putting it together, I was like, oh, because I'm the one that's 
doing that. <laughs> and it has a name. It has a <laughs> but, job title. But the but the name for us in the hood, it was like manager. You're 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 the manager, or you're the you're the leader, or you're the you're the team leader. You're the guy. You know what I'm saying? You're we didn't really guy. know what the, what the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, crazy. It is crazy, but you know, a lot of people didn't know the term choreographer until even so. You think you came to, can dance really came yeah. to the forefront, which yeah. is kind of amazing. It kind of educates a lot of people because it really it 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 opens you up to the to the real industry and what's really happening and how you do it. Um, that's the first time I learned how to teach counts and actually know how to count and actually know how to phrase certain things. And I mean, as you go on, you learn those things. But um, it was a crash course for me the whole way. I had nobody guiding me. It was just, you know, we do it, we do it, we do it. Yeah, because a lot of times when you see um, the contemporary dancers, if they want to choreograph, they're mentored by right. someone else that's a generation ahead, and then, and then they follow in their footsteps and things like that and assist them. Right. You're just, like, on the job learning. On the job learning the entire way. That's incredible. The entire way. Um, when I met Lorianne Gibson in New York, um, and, and that's when we started to work together. She was like, you know, Anything I have that's hip hop based or anything in that arena, you gotta be the one. And so I started working with her. She would call me in to do stuff with her. And that kinda introduced me on a bigger level. How did you America. meet Lorianne? Because Lorianne Gibson is huge. She's worked with everybody in the industry. How did I meet Lorianne? I met Lorianne. Um, a lot of the people that I trained danced with her and danced for her. And they were always like, Lou, you need to meet her. And they were saying the same thing to her. Oh, you need to meet him. And, and I was from Toronto. I didn't know she was from Toronto at that time. And so everyone was like, yo, how do you not know Lorianne? How do you guys not know each other? And, and one day I picked up my friend from one of her rehearsals. And me and her had a conversation. She was like, yo, everyone keeps telling me about you. And da 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 And then she saw my stuff. And it was just like that. That's incredible. And then we kind of teamed up. Because we both do our own things, you know. But it was we, whenever we came together on projects, we kind of worked your magic yeah we met we, we we created so many iconic moments what's your most iconic moment with Lorianne Gibson do you think hmm because there were one moment you're like I love this so um much. you know what okay I could it's probably two okay well I'm gonna I want say, both I'm gonna say cause my first the first movie I got to choreograph was Honey and that was with her and so we both we together we did that whole scenario Jessica Alba that was so cool to work with her every day she was so hungry anyway that's a whole nother movie but um so i would say honey and i would probably say hmm it's a tie between i want a puff off. daddy or uh alicia keys we did i work we've done so many things together for yeah. so many years a lot of people don't even know you know um i mean people that are in the industry know dancers know of course dancers know um but the world probably doesn't really know. Um, That's why you're here to tell us. Right. <laughs> I'm thinking probably my first Grammys, Alicia Keys, the first time we had her dancing. And it was, the, it was she did um, Woman's Worth, and then she did the remix. And we, and we had the guy come in from South America, and the first time they did a duet, and it was a whole big thing. So That's that was probably... That was one of the coolest moments, I think, when I'm thinking back. You know, I'm from a small town in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and I've worked award shows, and I, the small town to me is always like, I can't believe I'm here at uh, the Oscars or wherever. Yes. What was your first moment like at the Grammys when you're thinking, I'm a kid from Jamaica. What am I doing here? It was this tripping awesome. me out. It was tripping me out because I was in there, and um, a lot of my favorite artists were performing in the same show. So you had Mary J. Blige, you had, you know, um, NSYNC, you had da -da -da -da. It was everybody in the same show, and I was there like... Whoa, this is the Grammy stage. I'm, I'm actually on the stage. I think I took a picture on the stage. I think I snuck in and was watching a couple people do their techs. <laughs> no, it was it was it was it was a full circle for me. Yeah. You know, I'm a music. I love this whole industry in a certain way. So I watched all these shows. So to actually be in there and working with one of the top artists too, you know what I'm saying? In there doing that yeah. was a was a trip. Because you're at the table. You're at the table with all yeah. the people you want to work with. Yeah. So it was. It was it was it was pretty it was pretty good. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, when did you you were in New York working? When did you make the the move to Los Angeles? Um, I was in, I was going back and forth from New York to L.A. New York, L.A. Toronto, New York, L.A. Toronto, and um, what made me? I'm trying to remember what made me come out here. I feel like I had a I did this Nike campaign, 
um, in uh, Europe. It was with Sophia. It was with all these. It was amazing Nike campaign. Um, it's all on YouTube too. You can see. Yeah, it. Like we we um, shot these 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 three three videos three commercials in one. Um, and MSA I was at MSA at the time, and they were just like, "Lou, what are you doing? You're." It's like, are you scared to come to LA? Why do you not want to come out here? And I was just like, because I think I was comfortable. I had a whole industry in Toronto on lockdown. Yeah. So I was doing everything there. And I was coming to New York and doing things here and traveling back and forth to LA. And it just it just made sense. I was just like, what am I doing? Yeah. That's... You know, all the work that I'm trying to do is, is there. And I've already done everything here. So what am I doing? Yeah, it's time to challenge yourself on another yeah, level. And then um and be uncomfortable with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I so I I moved out to LA and um it's funny then I moved out here and then that's when I start I worked with Janet for the first time. And that was, and that was, and that was my first Janet experience and that was like is this what happens when you when you make yourself uncomfortable? You get somewhere and then you get things just start Jackson. to happen, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's you know that's that's a big one. And I think uh, I talk with so many dancers, and for many of them, working with Janet Jackson is, and I would say Beyonce probably is also another artist uh -huh. that people really really want to work for, um, just because they're so iconic, they're professional, they for dancers it's one of the greatest yeah. jobs. What was it like for you working with Janet for the first time? <laughs> You know what? The first I was scared. I would be scared, nervous. You gotta, you gotta understand. She, her album, that her control album was the first, the first album I bought with my lunch money, in high school. Like, you know, you save up them coins. You know. What have you done for me <laughs> Yo, lately? Come on now. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, and so to be in the room with her, um, which was which was scary because I had to, I was in a room and I was supposed to teach her something. And I was making it up with 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 my friend Ed, and I was teaching him. And she walked in, and my heart went out the window. But I can't show that, so I'm real cool up here. But inside, I'm losing my mind. And she sat in the corner and watched. She's watching me the whole time. She didn't say anything. And I was like, "Oh, she hates everything. I'm doing everything. She's hating it. She hates this. She hates that." And my boy was just like, "Yo, just do what you do, bro. Like, stop thinking about you're overthinking it. Like, you're trying to make it the perfect Janet routine. Just do what you do." And I started doing this thing that I was um. I was at Debbie Allen's camp, and we were what it was with me and a lot of the Crumpers, and it was kind of new at the time. And there was a hyphy movement that was happening, this this Bay movement. And there's this step they were doing these things with their shoulders, and it inspired me. And I remember, you know, as a, as a Jamaican, we do stuff with our shoulders too. Yeah. So anyway, I took this, I kind of just got this vibe, and started doing this thing. And I, at the corner of my eye, I saw her in the corner doing doing the shoulder thing too. And I was like, yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to Janet. I got to Janet. And then she came over and she, she asked me how to do it. And I was teaching her. And, and then that was it. And then that's, that, that's, that was what sealed it. Were you working on a particular tour? Uh, it was. She had just released. I think Feedback had just come out. Okay. And um, she was doing a performance for the Army base in um, San Diego. Oh, okay. And Ken Pendleton. Yes. Yeah. And so we had to do this. She had to do this performance. And... And uh, for the type of record and the vibe that they needed, you know, Gil reached out to me and I came through. And then, um, so that's what I was brought on to do that one song. Wow. And so then I came through, I did this song, and then I didn't even think I was going to get to go to the show. And she was like, are you coming to the show tomorrow? And I was like, oh. yes. she asked me to come to the show, you know? And I was like, I wanted to go so bad, but I didn't want to ask. And right. she said, yo, you, want, you, know, you should come to the show. And then, and then we went to the show, did the show, and then she took us to eat after and... It was a whole moment. And so I would have I think, been dying inside. Like, oh my gosh, like Janet Jackson just invited me to the show and now I'm going out to dinner with her. Yo, no, it tripped me. <laughs> but peep this. So then, so then we leave the show and we went to, we met at this little club thing first. I can't remember, was it club thing first? Anyway, we went to this club thing and then we're going to go eat or whatever. And, or it might be the other way around. Whatever it was, we were in there and I got there a little later. So all the dancers were at this table this big table and it was all full and the only chair left <laughs> was at her table. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna have to sit at the table. Like, that's the most awkward thing in the plan. Cause it was her, the makeup artist, the, the girl, the, her team. Her, her team. Yeah. And then all the dancers, all my friends were at the other table and I was like, oh, how's this gonna work? And then, and so I had to sit at her table and then I was like, 
You know what I'm saying? I would have been like, I'm at Janet Jackson's Yo, lunch table. No, in my mind, <laughs> losing my entire mind. I'd be losing my lunch, honestly. Like, and then they were trying to order, and I'm allergic to shellfish, and it just happened to be a, 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 a seafood spot, too. So I was just like, what's my luck? And she was like, oh, you don't eat that? I'll get you this. She ordered everything else for me, and I was just like, whoa. Like, she's cool. And then she's like, um, someone said, yo, Lou, you should show her the footage. Cause I always tape rehearsals and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, yo, let me see your thing. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm showing her rehearsal on my phone. And it was just crazy. It was just a good, it was, it was so great. It was a good time. And that wasn't the only time you worked for no, her, no, of course. That was, that was the first time. Yeah. And, um, and then the most recent time, uh, cause then I, I ended up doing some stuff for that tour. Right. They, um, had a couple numbers in the tour, but then, um, when she came back with the Unbreakable album, uh, I got brought in to to start training her hip hop, and um, it was the first time she she has danced in seven years or something like that. That's amazing. And I was, you know, the last time I, you know, because I, I remembered working with it. It, it was a good time, but it was nerve wracking because I was like, whoa, this is the first time I'm in at the beginning of the project, right? To actually like teach her stuff. I was like, yo, I'm teaching her stuff. And she wanted to learn what I would teach in class. She was just like, yo, I want to learn what he did in class. Like, whatever. I want him to teach you what he wants to teach me. And I was just like, whoa, talk about the pressure. You know what I'm saying? A lot the, of pressure. The pressure. And it's just me and her. And then Gil was in there. He's like, I'm going to learn it too with her. You know, so it's comfortable for everybody. Um, and she came in and it was good that she remembered me, which, which made my heart a lot better, you know? Well, I think what it proves, though, these like superstars, like the level that the Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, mm-hmm. Beyonce, these people that reach the upper echelons of uh, success, they're constant students. And I think mm-hmm. you, you're pointing something out. She's asking you to go back to basics of what um, she can learn as a student in a yeah. classroom setting. Because people just think like, I'm going to become famous and it's, you know, I'm going to do this great album. It's going to go platinum yeah. and then I can just relax. No. That's not what happens. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not with the real ones, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, and she was really like for real focused. Like she was in there every day, and it was just us in this in the studio in New York. And we would just, I would just teach her stuff, and she would learn it, and she would get mad if she doesn't get it right or if she doesn't do it right. Like she's running us, you know. It's a trip, and she was um, never made me feel crazy at all ever, and it was a good time. And so we did that, and then um, went on to do the tour. The uh, tour and um, which is about to start back. Yes, because she had back. her baby boy. She had her baby boy. So that's exciting. Yeah, it's crazy. So, but she's ready to come back and eat. So I'm sure it's gonna be a whole nother movie. Oh, that's so exciting. Are, yeah. you're, are you going to be going back to the? I don't. I don't, don't say too many things, but I mean, most. you know what I'm saying? We yeah. Gotta, it's gotta finish back. We gotta finish what we started. What we started exactly. So yeah. It's when she's ready. You yeah. Maybe we'll get a phone call. And, and it's going to be everything will be everything. And you'll see that <laughs> cute little baby. Yo, and see her smile. Her smile is the smile of life, by the way. She comes in that room and smiles and everybody's Lights like. Lights up the room. Yeah, done that. Were you ever able to work with Michael before he passed away? Never. <sighs> never. You know, that's, um. yeah, it's crazy. Never got to work with Michael. Yeah, that breaks my yeah. heart. You know, it's just uh, it's hard to believe that, you know, we are at what, like eight years since it happened and Ooh. coming up this July. And uh, it's still like it's just yeah. one of those tragedies that you're just like you're never going to really get over. that. No, no, no. it's it's such hard. an impact, man. It's crazy. Yeah. And I think like what people don't realize if you were, you know, born after the, the huge Michael Jackson era, like the impact that he made, not only on the Motown sound, but then on the MTV generation, uh-huh. um, it's something that'll always stay, stick in the back of my mind because, uh, you know, later it was harder because there was like tabloids and, and everything else and the paparazzi, just different influences of who mm-hmm. Michael Jackson was. But yeah. the, the core of who he was as an artist is something that is, it's an incredible legacy. Yeah. Never going to live that down. It's just what yeah. it is, you know? I can listen to Off the Wall all day. All, all night. day long. Yes. In my head, I'm dancing Timeless. just like him, but I know it doesn't look like that. But um, but why in, is that though? Everyone everyone feels like that because he gets you so much that you feel like you can do it, and everybody does it. Yes, it's true. Like I feel like I can moonwalk like him, and I feel like I've got his little like leg thing down. Yes. And when you videotape it, it looks nothing like nothing that. like it, but, but it felt like it, and that's why that's what inside. matters. Yes, that's yeah. exactly that's what, <laughs> in my soul. That's what matters. 
all day. Yeah, it's true, and uh, very few artists make you feel that way. And I think that that's mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. the legacy that he leaves behind. Um, I'd love to know. You know, we've been talking before we got on air about "So You Think You Can Dance," but mm-hmm. you started on "So You Think You Can Dance Canada" before yes. the U.S. version. Yeah, how I, was did, a, I was a judge and how choreographer. How did that under. come around for you? Oh, um, it came around after when I when I moved into my first real apartment out here. And I was like, okay, Canada, love to love you, but now I'm here. Bye. And then I get an email, hey, so we're, we're doing the show in Canada. Um, you think you want to, uh, could you come up here and maybe audition for, for one of the roles, maybe as a judge or a carver? And I was like, whoa. And then um, they flew me up. I did the, I did the audition. They, they kind of placed us around with, with 100 different people. And um, then I got the job. And then it was, uh, yep, so we're going to have you back in Canada for four months of the year. <laughs> and I was like, of course this happens when I leave. But it was perfect. Yes. It was, it, it was, it was perfect. It was, um, it, was, it was probably four of my greatest years. Ooh. Just, just, just experiences and, and exposure and, um, and, and learning, you know, because people don't really, people don't know as a choreographer on the show, it's a, it's a game for you too. Mm-hmm. Like it's a lot that goes behind it, and it's a lot of you don't really know who you get until you get them, and then you have two minutes to make it hot, and you have to do it in front of everybody on TV, and it has to be right and perfect, you, you know. You know, I've had talked with Spencer Liff quite a bit, and he's like, you know, in your head you've created this number because, mm-hmm. and then you get to the studio and they're like, this is who you have, and you're like, they <laughs> might not be, you yeah. know, trained in Broadway or trained in hip hop. And you're like, I have to alter this a little bit. But yeah. he's like, you still have to keep the core of what you created because you are not just doing movement. You're doing wardrobe and you're doing lighting. And- everything. And if everything doesn't come together right, the person that looks whack is you. That's right. And a lot of people don't understand that. And the pressure is crazy, you know. And, and um, it takes a certain skill or a certain amount of experience to be able to know when to abandon ship with certain certain things that you see in your head mm-hmm. but still have the integrity of what you want it takes a while to get that so that's why a lot of new choreographers come on the show and they're like "Woo, we're doing the show and then you talk to them after they're like whoa that yeah. was crazy how do y'all do this every week you know but it's really you really it 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 forces you to learn how to make decisions fast and Look at what you do and be objective quickly. You know what I'm saying? And go with your gut instinct. And go with your gut. Yeah. And know, I know how to. I know how to see what they have and see what you have and see how to make the best of both worlds because you got to make them look good. You see, you, it, it's not about you, even though it is about you, but it's not. Well, uh-huh. and the interesting balance on, on So You Think, and I'm sure this was also in Canada, but uh, Nigel will call out choreographers if he feels like. Th- the, yeah. the movement failed the contestants yes. um, or the overall concept. And um, he will call people out on it. It's not like you're never going to be back on the show, but he'll say, you know, not your best work. And we don't yeah. go to work every single day and we're at our best. So I do think it's interesting, but I think yeah. it keeps all of you guys, like I have to go in here and I have to put give my A game. Like yeah. my A hat's, I'm wearing it. Yeah. Can't give my C hat today. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you have a C, a C plate in front of you. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Because people don't... But this is where this is where your skill you have to prove yourself. You have to show people that you know what you're doing. Right. And how are you if when you have that contestant that that can't do hip hop, mm-hmm. um, how do you bring up the best in them and right. work with the what they have and what they can do? How do you and make, make them that feel shine? and make them feel comfortable doing it? Because they have to feel comfortable too or it's still gonna go down in flames. Well, and this brings up a good point because I remember in season eleven you had Carly and Serge, and Serge and he yes. talked about this openly. Um he said I had such a hard time learning one of mm-hmm. um, Lou's pieces, and he was just like, he's like, I did 12 hours rehearsal, and then I'd go home, and I'd lock myself in the room, and I'd do it over and over again, because mm-hmm. it wasn't natural movement to him. Yeah. Um, and he did his best out there, but then Nigel gets out there, and he's like, well. Yeah, Nigel Nigel came for him, but really, he did a good job. He actually didn't do as bad as Nigel made him sound like I he thought did. He, he great. did a great job. And, and you saw the progress, too. Of course, and I saw it, and, and it's funny, because ever since that, that episode, Serge and I have been friends the whole time. Like we 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 became friends after not became friends, but we we've, we've been in touch the whole time. Cause that's been a bond. It, and you know what? It's very clear if you watch any of the interviews that Serge did after that number, mm-hmm. he has a clear respect 
for you as a choreographer and he had a clear respect for the movement that you created, it mm. was challenging for him, yeah. but he was like, I'm going to do my best to make you look good too. You yeah, know? No, and, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it from him a lot because it was a tough one and she was killing it. Carly was And good. so it was making it, it was even more pressure for him because... He's like, you know, I can't go down. Carly's killing it, and he's a he's a macho guy too, you know. Yep. So he has to figure it out. But I was I was I was proud of him. He, he figured it out. Yeah, that's amazing. He figured it out. Yeah, and that's what you have to do as a contestant. You yeah. have to roll with it because every week's different. And the longer you're in the game, the more tired you are. Yeah. The injuries and the come more up. that they expect from you. <laughs> that's right. You know what I'm saying? Where's that improvement? That's that's what they're looking for. They're like, you know, you can't be at your week one level if you're in week <laughs> six. Exactly. Or just get out of here. Now, how much do you? And I always think that this is interesting because we've had a lot of choreographers in here, and and um, rehearsal sort of etiquette, rehearsal demeanor for the contestants. I, I hear it comes back to me like, so and so was a little lazy in rehearsal. So and so gives one hundred and ten percent. Do you hear from other choreographers like, watch out for this one? This one you're gonna love. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we're all human, and that's it. That's that's something for everyone to know. Period about this industry, people talk. So how you were in a rehearsal for somebody else last week on a job, I might hear about it before you even get into my room. So it's the same thing on the show, you know? Because we all sit down and cause we all know the struggle. The struggle's real. So we'd be <laughs> like, yo, so how was it How was it last week? Oh, or even, even if we don't ask about it, somebody might be like, yo, they're killing me. <laughs> or so-and-so, you know, da 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 Or yo, so-and-so's great. Or she might not have to step, but so-and-so's great. So the energy, you kind of get a little feedback before yeah. you even get in. So this is just a little word to the wise to season 14 exactly. contestants. Be nice. Be the, nice. Do your best. Do your best, for yeah. real. And, 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 and good energy. Because when, when we walk in there and we walk into bad energy or lazy energy or whatever that is, it sets the tone. Yeah. And you guys don't have a lot of time with them either. No. To set that piece. Yo, we have no time. People think we have all this time. We have no time. It's like four hours for the first rehearsal, right? And then it's just... Yeah, but, but not even four full hours because it's you're being interviewed. Mm -hmm. It's it's lighting setups and stuff. So it's the, the that three hours that you thought you had is really an hour and a half. But that's an hour and a half of you teaching, but also teaching for the camera. And they're, so they're not even in full learn mode in a certain way because they know they're being taped too. Yeah. So it's a whole thing, you know? Um, yes, it's, it's tough. It is tough. It's tough. <laughs> and and for you too, like as a choreographer, you know, if you're you're choreographing for Janet for the stage, you know, for a concert, it's one thing. And then if you're choreographing for So You Think, of course, totally different. It's a whole new movie. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole new movie. But those things, for real, set you up for doing the Janets and the J Lo's and the, you know, what I'm saying Puff Daddies. And I mean, with that one, you got to learn. You know, I learned so much from that one. Puff Daddy, you know, um, but the whole pressure of the two minute, you have two minutes to get that hot. And that's it. Because the, the it. answers are so short. That's it. And you have to make that work. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. One of my favorite pieces, and I, I have to ask, because it's like the fangirl in me, like I said, I've watched it multiple times, <laughs> 25, 30, 40. I don't, I don't even know. But uh, when you have a Twitch and when you have a fiction together, uh -huh. that I mean, you know that's going to yeah. be magic going in. Yeah. Um, and you probably could have done, you did any, whatever you wanted to do with them, you could. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it, it's a trip because, you know, like, you know you have those two. And, I, and, and at that point, uh, fiction was getting better. Yes. Because fiction started off, he started off great, but he was growing. He was young too. He was so young and he was so green and he had so much pressure on him that people thought, oh, he's a great performer, he got it. But he was really stressing out. Anyway, by the time I got him again, because I had him for the first the first episode and then I had him again with Twitch. But then by the time we got together with Twitch, Fiction and I have already had a repertoire, you know, between yeah. us. And Twitch is Twitch and we've worked together before. So, so great. Twitch is the man. Yeah. And we got a photo up there too. Come on. Come on. Come Isn't on. that a good one? Come on. Nah, um, no, nah, it was it was it was good. And I think we had fun. Yeah. We we, we had fun because I I mean I love that record and I was like, guys, I just want us to groove and have fun. We just gotta make this fun. And y'all and I wanna show how the both of you guys play off of each other, you know? Cause they really do have a good chemistry.
They've got a great chemistry. Yeah, it's and I crazy. think that's what makes it so much fun to watch when they're like doing like this move with their feet. I can't yeah. do it because you guys can't see yeah. my feet. But there's that, yeah. and there's like this. There's uh-huh. so many moments in my head, or like at the end. I, I, I uh huh. The little, the little, the, the little, little move oh, life. You yes. know. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like it makes me yeah. so happy, and this is what makes me a fangirl of your work. That I like, I go back to certain um, moments and go, I just want to watch that again. I want to watch that again. Um, and, and it is, it's one of those Thanks. dances that we'll always remember on. So you think? I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I love that. Yeah. How about last season, um, working with the kids? Uh, different. It was different for everyone. Yeah. We were all just kind of even as a reporter backstage. It was one of those things that I had to be like, okay, what am I going to ask kids every single week? You know. <laughs> um, and they were so cute and so sweet and so motivated. I, I think it surprised everyone. But again, there's 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 some limitations too. You know what? It's 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 um. Going into it, I didn't know if I wanted to go into it. Because mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, the, the pressure's already crazy with the grown-ups. What the hell's going to happen with these kids? You know what I'm saying? And But thankfully, the kids that I got to work with, they, they are like little grown-ups. Yes. They're little grown-ups. And so they, they approached it. They learned as fast as the grown They were quick. They were they, super quick. They were super quick. And super focused, they all wanted to be stars. Each one wanted to be a star. They had a so hunger. They had a hunger that I was like, it actually revitalized me a little bit in a weird mm-hmm. way because they're so new and hungry and they wanna, they wanna show off and they're like, let's do it, let's do it. I wanna learn everything. I wanna do it like, exactly like that. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. And so that pushes you too. So I actually had had a lot of fun with the kids. Uh, and I think you worked with Shaden, Tahani, yep. uh-huh. Kita. Yep. Did you know Kita was gonna win? After working with him, hey, yo, I knew it because you know. I knew it because his he has this. Um, I just got chills, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he has this. Uh, it's this star quality in him, and it's and it's and it's and it's real. And he's humble, but he's such a show off. Yeah, but how are you a show off, but you're humble? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like he. It was it was confidence without being cocky in a way, in a, in a way. And he's this tall. And now he's this tall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, and he was really professional. He was on time. He was about it. He was, he, his energy was good the whole time. And I was just like, this little boy's a star. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. Because he did everybody's, even the things that no one thought he could do or he was going to do good in, he performed the hell out of it. Yeah. What are you going to say? And, you know, and two at that age, you know, when you're like 13, 14, you have a, um, oftentimes you're um, awkward and mm-hmm. you're, you just sit there and you're, you're self aware, but in a way that you're like, I don't want people to see me do contemporary, maybe, right. or, you know, because like I'm a hip hop guy or whatever. I think the greatest thing about Kita, and I noticed this all last summer, he already knew who he was and he felt good about who he was. And he wasn't, he wasn't scared of who he was. Exactly. And he wasn't scared to do other things knowing who he was. Absolutely. And I've seen him a lot throughout this year. I've run into him in a lot of dance events. And his his mom, the family is amazing. Mm-hmm. He's respectful. He's polite. I love talking with him. Um, I tell you, he's a little star. He, he is a star. He's a little movie star. I see him everywhere. I'm like, this boy is Arnold. He's the new Arnold. If he had a different strokes now, he'd be on it. And, and he's it. choreographing. Like, he, yeah. he's got it. He's got everything early. He's got all the tools. So as long as he just, like, kind of stays focused and, and enjoys it. Yeah. I'm I'm so all happy. All day. I see him. I see him all the way up there. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that was he was away. one of my favorites actually. And I think a lot of people thought, how did he win when you had Tate who was, you know, Tate McRae was amazing. Oh, no, Tate, Tate's She's incredible. She's a superstar no, too. Tate's incredible. But that boy Kita is such a, something special, man. And then his story too was special. His so you amazing. can't you can't come from that story with that passion and be surprised that he's there. Absolutely. And I think his his mom has done a really incredible job raising awesome. kids alone. And she's great. She's awesome. She's awesome. I love her. Because you know, we meet a lot of we meet a lot of parents. <laughs> yes. And we we meet a lot of parents. <laughs> You've seen Not a lot. even just on the show, just period. You teach Tans, a lot, so yeah. And it could be it, it yeah, it's a lot of craziness out there. But his mom is real underground grounded level headed yeah. yeah the whole family is the whole family is fantastic um well, you're, you're talking about teaching and, and you do a lot of teaching out there yeah. and dance has changed tremendously like i think about what dance looked like when i was you know out <laughs> there as a student and then out there professionally so different mm-hmm. what do you see that's great about students in class and what do you say might need to be improved i think off the top i think the 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 new generation they learn quicker. I think because 
a lot there's uh dance studios are so much more popular now mm -hmm. and conventions are more popular when i was coming up we did there were there were no conventions for me to see swoop or certain people that were world that, of dance that inspired tour. me you know what world i mean of dance tour is like amazing. between world of dance and then monsters of hip-hop and yeah. and even the pulse the different ones it it allows kids to to firsthand learn from people mm -hmm. and they and and they learn in a room of 500 kids so a lot of kids just just off the top know how to learn faster so the this this new generation the kids are quicker they they know how to emulate what you're doing faster mm -hmm. the thing is because it's such a machine and everyone learns how to do these things fast and the internet and, and youtube and everyone's a star like individuals there's not a lot of performers out there there's not a lot of individual superstars where i think back in the day i hate saying back in the day but you know what i'm saying yeah back in the day back in the day <laughs> back in the day Just back in the day like people you had to be a performer to make it mm -hmm. you know um and because classes weren't coming around to you you had to stand out so people just wanted to be people had more individual personality back then where now sometimes it's like a room of room full of robots yeah. They all learn fast and everyone is quick, but everyone looks like everybody. Yeah, you're looking for that performer that catches your eye. Yeah, and have that individual style and certain thing about them. But there's so many, there's so much 500 of the same person out there. It, it makes it hard to find stars. And, and I think trying to tell a kid, like, you don't have to be technically perfect. Like, a little messy is actually okay because... Yeah something beautiful can come out of it and if we see that sparkle you're like yes that that yeah, because that's what grabs the camera sometimes mm -hmm. you know it's sometimes it's not the one that did the that was perfectly te like the technique was perfect and oh they did the step right the camera catches the person that has the vibe that has the look that has the energy so you i think kids need to work on their personality yeah, and I think that's, yeah. you know, where So You Think comes in really well. You know, we always say it's America's favorite yeah. dancer. It's not America's best dancer. Because yeah. can, we can go through the list of probably the best technical trained dancer. Of course, and of course. In most cases, maybe Ricky Ubeda is probably <laughs> <laughs> the one <laughs> major exception to this rule. Right. Um, but usually uh, it's someone else that had a little something mm -hmm. else from way had deep inside. A special sauce, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah. Now, I know you're working on a lot of new projects, and you were like, yes. I gotta tell you about this. Oh my what gosh, is it? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, um, I've written music for a long time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't really know that. Um, I had developed an artist, we signed a Capitol Records, it's a whole scenario. But um, I haven't done it in a while, and I recently, between, between J-Lo and Puff, mm -hmm. I kinda, I don't know, music got me again, and I ended up working on some working on this project which is now is now this thing called the downbeat it's like my my mixtape it's like dj khaled got a record out i have yeah. a record out but i'm featuring a lot of friends and talented people that happen to be which it didn't start out to be like this but it happened to be you know major choreographers or major dancers that people either knew were talented in music or didn't know Oh, that's interesting. And so, you know, I just started off doing this because I was like, yo, can I can I write music again? Do I know how to write it? Mm -hmm. And I started writing music and I would call friends in to be like, hey, I got this song and I just need a girl's voice. Could you come in here and maybe I can get you to do this and you can learn this? And they came in and learned it and they were all my friends from all different parts of the industry, you know? So turned out, you know, you, you have like a Paris come over here. You have a Matt Cady over here. You have, a, you know, Lorianne Gibson, a Gil. Oh, yeah. You have... Uh, you know, Dom, you have Johnny, you have all these different people that came in and it turned out to be like a compilation of, of amazing records that are now a part of my project that's, that's actually gonna be available. People can buy it on, on iTunes and everything. I dropped one single already with Dom, but it's, um, it turned out to be a, a movie and I ended up directing all the videos for it. Oh, so cool. Um, like for real, for real videos, like real, real music, real videos, and it shows all these dancers and these choreographers on a whole nother level. Cause you don't see, you didn't know that they were artists. And a lot of dancers and choreographers are artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul Abdul. Triple threats. And, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You're looking at J-Lo, you're looking at, you know, Puff Day. You know, every, there's a lot of people that started off as dancers mm -hmm. that nobody realized had that gift. So it was actually cool for me to see, pull certain things out of certain friends that have, that's like incredible. 
So um, if you directed all the videos, are they available or um, are you going to do it? I'm dropping them individually. I was going to okay. do the whole one time thing, but this world is too fast. <laughs> you weren't, <I'm> <laughs> weren't going to do a Beyonce like nah. at midnight something's happening uh -uh. and the beehive nah. all comes out? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your nah. fan group called? We, we, gotta have, we have to start. You guys on Twitter, think of a fan group for, for Lou because. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> we need something let's like the beehive, it. but come you know. On, let's find it for Lou Brown. Let's just find it. Let's find it. <laughs> no, but for real though, it's. it's um. It's pretty impressive when you when you listen to it and you hear what everybody's doing and what they sound like and you see them in another light. You see them as artists outside of just being dancers or just being choreographers. Well, and, and working the music and then creating the visual for it, um, how did it inspire you? Did it change your ideas oh my gosh. of movement as a director? What? It gave me so it gave me so much life. I think um, cuz I've always liked to direct. I always wanted to direct, you know, but it's um actually directing these videos, you know, with a whole crew, like for real, for real, it put me on, it put me on the other side of it and I was able to write these treatments and actually see them come to life and, um, and see these artists turn into superstars. And, you know, it's a whole thing going on right now. There's a whole, there's, there's a whole, it's about to be distributed. It's a whole thing that's about to happen. So where can people find it? Because then you have a YouTube channel. Is it going to be like, yes, be I mean, right now, right now you can, you can, you can check it out on, um, uh, if you, if you go to the downbeat, you can go to my Facebook page Yep. and there's, uh, you can go to the downbeat project Facebook page. Um, everything's hashtagged right now, the downbeat project, okay. the downbeat volume one. Um, the first single is woozy. Which is Dom featuring Dom. Which we heard at the beginning yes, of this with interview. Dom B and Johnny Erasmus, who is dancing on tour right now with Justin Bieber. He has his whole situation going on. Um, but that's the first single out. The next one's about to drop uh, July 8th. All right. Uh, with, 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 with another two artists, another two surprises. Um, but yeah, check it out. What was your biggest challenge in doing this? Because there's always, you know, you start doing this and you're like, this is great. And then all of a sudden uh, you hit that brick wall and you're like, whoa. <laughs> Um, money. Money. <laughs> no, because you know I want it to be real. It's got to yeah. be proper. I'm a very, I'm a Virgo too, so we got to have it perfect. So, um, the challenges I think was really just about making everything look and sound exactly what it needs to sound like, and on the level that everybody's on. Yeah. Like I can't wait for Janet to hear this. I can't, cause nobody knows that we've been doing this. Can't wait for Puff and them to hear. You know. Yeah. Share your. I can't wait. I could have, I could have gone to them a long time ago and been like. You know, because I've, I've had dealings with Puff on music before, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Anyway, I'm excited about it. Now you're it. ready to deliver your baby Ooh, to him. Oh, my gosh. It's about to be a problem. <laughs> about to be a problem. So many problems. So many yes. good problems, which yes. I, we love. For you, because, I, you know, I think you've really reached a, an incredible level as an artist. Um, what is that dream project that you have yet to do that's still up there hmm. and you're like, I'm going to do it? Uh... I think it's a it it's a certain dance movie. I don't mm -hmm. know. I, um, Would you direct or choreograph or both? Both. Oh, I love that. Both, um, because you know, I mean, it's been so many years now, and a lot of artists that I wanted to work with, I got to work with them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that I wanted to, oh, I need to. That would be the that after I do that, I'm quitting. You know, I've worked with a lot of those people, so I think right now it's 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 that movie or that project that's gonna change the world. That's gonna bring something new to the industry. That's what I wanna. I love dance of. movies too. Yeah, they're such a great market for them. People love them. Well, lo I'll they sit never there on die. Amazon. They never die. They're on Netflix. <laughs> like just, yeah. you can go up through all the step up movies. Yeah, can, <laughs> even the worst ones are still there. You know uh, what I mean? Like it's just a thing. Yeah, it is. There's some. I just watched. This is so bad. Dance, Deadly Dance Mom, which must have been like a lifetime. Like, Ooh, I yeah. Saw that. I never Did you saw see that. it? You didn't never, see it. No, no, it's no, on like Amazon, it. you guys, and it stars like Beverly Mitchell from Seventh Heaven. But it's and I think it's based off of like Dance Mom's Gone Wrong kind of thing. Got you. But I, it had me for ninety minutes. <laughs> I was there, and so I need to check this out. I know I'm gonna be like Deadly Dance Mom on Amazon. It's free with Prime. So oh, there we go. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. I mean, if I'm willing to watch the most absurd dance movie, yeah. when I get to the great quality stuff like Step Up, I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all in, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I would love uh, to see that. I mean, that's that's definitely something, you know. I always yeah. love seeing like the next dance movie that that's sort of like gripping us all and Yeah, man, cuz I think there's still a there's still a certain dance movie that hasn't been out there yet. And I want to be a part of that. It, it always seems to be sort of like the West Side Story, like uh -huh. two people from opposite sides of the track coming together. So, what's the dance movie we haven't seen, do you know? Do we you haven't I think it's I think it's uh 
one that's a little, a lot more soulful. Mm. It's been a lot of very poppy, poppy dance movies. But I think one that has a little bit of, it's a little dark. Yeah. A little dark, but a little bit more gritty and soulful. A little more edge. A little more edge. Yeah. You know? You know, and I think probably a little bit more realistic because when we hear stories of like how dance saved people. Like that. Yeah. I want, I want to do that one. Okay, I'll write it and then you direct and, <laughs> and choreograph. Let's go. I'm gonna do that do it. and then we'll do the soundtrack for it and everything. We got it. And we'll come up with a better name than Deadly Dance Mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's everything to me. Deadly Dancer. Deadly Dancer. Dun dun. It's a horror movie. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's. It was conceived right here <laughs> to the point. Y'all remember that. Remember that. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh. Well, I yeah. want to thank you so much for, for joining me today because it just really is a thrill because I love your work. You. I'm really excited now that um, I know how excited you are about season Ooh. 14. Oh, I'm still thinking about the... Yes. Okay. And, and let me just let kind of clue everyone in, in terms of like what was happening before it went on air. He's like, that's a problem. That's a problem. And, <laughs> and he means like, not like a problem. Like this is amazing. Yeah, it's a situation um, with like, for sure. Yeah. Like, this person, this person, this person, this person. This is this is an exciting season. It's gonna ahead. be a dope season. Like I'm just looking at all the trouble that's about to go on. Mm -hmm. Cause everybody's a performer. I want to be a fly in that. Jeez. And he kept on going. Mm -hmm, yep, yep. And then he goes. Yeah. He goes. I have sound effects to all this. I mean, as, I'm, <laughs> as we're talking about it and watching a couple of the audition videos, which you might, which you guys have seen, yeah. and they are contenders so yeah i'll be making sounds when i watch watch clips you're like yes i'm like uh -huh. ooh, yeah mm, i'm here to beat and i'll be making sounds to the beat and i'm like <laughs> oh yeah every time you do something hot something comes out of me you know yeah that's dope so I, i'm gonna be a fly in the wall i'm gonna be like where are you rehearsing let me sneak in <laughs> no i'll be backstage i'll Yo, be backstage so i will definitely be backstage for the live shows and uh hopefully be getting your feedback on the other end yeah. after yeah, yeah, yeah. you appear so for sure yes for sure oh uh, well thank you so much for for coming here let us know um where everyone can find you twitter instagram yes uh instagram l-u-u-d-a-d-d-y Lou Daddy. At Lou Daddy. Uh, um, Twitter is at Lou Brown, L U B R O W N. Facebook is Luther Brown. Um, Woozy, check it out. It's on. It's on iTunes. It's on everything. Spotify. Blah 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 blah. It's on everything. Um, Woozy Dom B featuring Jay Blaze. Let's Here do it. Here it is. Come on. <laughs> hey. I, I love this. And you guys, I just want to let you know that next week's guest will be Dancing with the Stars cast member. Brittany Cherry, she'll be here come in the studio. Yeah, we haven't done a little Dancing with the Stars, so. Come on, come on. Uh, no, she'll, it'll be great to have her in studio. You guys, thank you for all of your support with To The Point. I so appreciate it. Keep the word spreading out there. And if you have any follow-up questions about what you heard today, hit me up with them on Twitter, because then I will follow up with Lou just to make sure we get the facts, as I like to say, yes. not the fake stories. Yes, no fake news. No fake news. We are all real here. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us here. <laughs> Dance Network presents To The Point with Kristen Burke on Popcorn Talk. Hey. Producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Underbauer, Bill Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only. They do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.